Hi friends, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. So today is week five of our Scullover Sew Along. And if you don't know what a Scullover is, check out the kits right up here. We are doing Scullover. This is the, this is my little pattern book that I'm working from. It has everything I need inside of it. And I don't know what else to say because I've introduced this four times now, five actually. Anyway, so let's get to week five of the sew along and I'll show you where I'm at so far. All right, here is all of my fabrics. So those were my fat quarters. These are my little scrappy pieces. Those are my 16th pieces. Those are my three eighths. And up there is my fat eighths. So I've already pulled my colors. Here are all my colors. I have lined them up with my little tags on the sides. As you can see, it's all on the right side. There's my black. There's my light. And here's my book. So let's get started on cutting all these pieces out. But first, let me tell you how I got these colors. I opened my lovely book here. And I'm grabbing pages 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. So I'm going to pull those pattern pages out. And then we're going to skip to this part of my book right here. And as you can see, each one of our pages has letter codes on them telling what piece color goes where. So right here is JN. So I just looked right here on my cheat sheet for JN, which is it's in alphabetical order. So that would be jungle. So that's my first color way up there at the top that you can't barely see. And then QZ, and I pulled that, and so on and so forth. So you just look, they're in alphabetical order. If you don't want to use this chart, there are bigger color charts right here that tell you what the colors are. I'm just going by code, which makes it a little bit easier for me. And then all of my finished pieces will be going in here. And right now, we're actually going to work from the chart of what gets cut from where. I'm going to refer to this a few times for some of these pieces because I'm running really low on a couple of them. So I'm going to actually keep my book open, but I'm going to move it over to the ironing board so you won't actually see me using it. But we're going to go ahead and cut out all the pieces needed for all these page 25 through 30 for week five. All right, so I grabbed my handy dandy scissors. I'm going to move this book behind me so you won't see it, but I will. And we're going to go ahead and cut out the pieces needed for all of these blocks that we're doing in today's video. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this light on. I'm going to lay my piece on here and then I'm going to grab the fabrics that are needed for this, which are way up there. Move that to the side. I'm going to go ahead and reach up here and grab JN because that's the first one I need. And I'm going to lay it on here and find the best place for it, which seems to be right here. Uh, I don't think you guys can see through it, but I can. I'm making sure that I'm cutting a quarter inch bigger than the markings on my page. So I'm going right here and I'm cutting right here. I'm not cutting my paper. I'm only cutting my fabric. So there is my piece for JN. So I'm going to set that aside right here. Then I need QZ. So I'm going to reach through Just gonna pull those closer to me. For my QZ, um, this is a fresh new piece, so we're just gonna line it up here on this edge. 
It's covering everywhere I need it to cover by a quarter inch. And cut this way. So there's that. The next one is Z. Z or ZZ. Let's just cut Z because it's right here. Let's see. Cut it right. And here's my ZZ for this piece right here. Just finding the best place for it. I'm going to take this funky cut right here. It's covering all the way. So there's that piece. And then I need S, G. So I'm going to reach over, find a good spot on S, G. Oh, right there, this end piece. Look at that. That's perfect. So I'm just going to cut it. It's a quarter inch bigger all the way around. And then P, D, grab that out. And that one's just a little tiny piece that I'll get from right here. Actually, let's go to this edge right here. I'll just grab it from right here. Oop, a little bit more up. Just like that. So there's all the pieces I need for page 25. I'm going to go ahead and spare you cutting the rest of these. Okay, and I'm going to put you in fast forward while I cut all these out.
my microphone was not on. Okay, so I'm going to clear some things up that I've been getting some emails and questions asked. So I trimmed off the top of page 30, okay, just so that it's the right size. And people have been asking, so I folded on all my lines, because I was talking about that before the microphone decided to do its thing. Anyway, I folded on all my lines, and from the start, I trimmed away a quarter inch from fold between piece one and two. And I've also pinned it in place. So I started by folding it, and then I used my add a quarter ruler and trimmed between one and two. That way I have a nice straight line between one and two where I need to line up my next piece. That's where bringing my light back up here comes in place. So between one and two, there's piece two, I'm gonna make sure that it's covering the piece all the way and right there in that corner it is, right here under there it is. So I'm gonna put these right sides together on here. I just fold it back and make sure again, yep. And I have a nice straight line. I'm gonna move the light out of the way. And we're gonna sew, I'm gonna hold that in place between one and two. Oh, well, it would help if I had bobbin thread. Okay. Before any of this gets sewn on again, I'm going to do it one more time due to the fact that it probably moved between doing that step. So I'm going to fold this back and make sure it covers. And it does. This is where I want it to be. Just like this. I'm going to hold it move the light out of the way and sew between one and two. All right, now let's make sure it covered it before I move it away. It's covered all the way. There we have it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finger Press this back. I really don't need to get rid of any excess seam back there because it is 100% hidden. There we go. All right, between one and two is done. I don't need my pins no more. I'm gonna go ahead and fold between, on the line between my two and three. And again, I'm just gonna pull the paper away just a little bit so that I have a nice straight line. Oh, and it shifted just a little bit. Let's fold that back really tight. There we go. I have a little bit of a seam there. All right, so I'm going to fold between two and three. I'm going to get rid of that extra seam allowance. And then I'm gonna find OW, which is this color wasabi. So I know that it goes right here. I'm just gonna hold the side that I know is gonna cover right here. I'm gonna flip it to this back side, like this. I'm gonna lay it at my light so I can make sure that it's covering it. And it is right there, just like that. Flip it over and sew between two and three. All right here. Before I do anything, I'm gonna fold it back, make sure that it covers and it does. I'm gonna get rid of that excess seam allowance. And due to the angles that I've been getting in, I'm decided to start using my Singer rotary cutter because this one, my Martelli that I'm used to, keeps hitting right here on the edge. 
since I'm doing everything like right here. All right, so two and three is sewn and it covers it all the way. Yep, perfect. Just make sure one more time. All right, now we're gonna go between one and four. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold between one and four. And I'm gonna cut that excess away, making a quarter inch seam allowance. And it's nice to have this little cutting mat. I had it and I didn't know where it was. It's right in front of my face the whole entire time. It was sitting on that, uh, in front of this picture this whole time. All right, so the letter is T. So T is espresso, which is this one. I'm gonna lay this right here and find out where it's gonna go. So what I'm doing is on my light, I'm laying the piece where it needs to go. I'm gonna grab the side that I know I'm sewing on. I'm gonna hold that and put it to the back side. I'm gonna line those up. I'm gonna fold it and make sure that it covers it and it does. So that's where I want it. I'm gonna move the light out of the way and the ruler. Flip it over, holding my piece, and sew between one and four. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it covers it all the way. I'm gonna hold it over my light, and it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip away any excess seam allowance. It literally is just a tiny smidge. Okay, so that's good. I'm going to press that back. Using my finger or you can use your roller because after a while the finger will start to hurt. Well, for me it does at least. All right, now we're going to go between four and five, and our last piece is UP. But I'm gonna get rid of that seam allowance first. That way it's nice and straight and I know what I'm working with. It's literally not even an eighth of an inch. All right, I'm gonna lay this on my light box, find the piece that I'm covering with, and we're gonna put that on here. I'm just gonna make sure that however I sew it, covers the whole thing, and that's what I'm doing over at the light. Move that out of the way, holding my piece, and sewing between four and five. And there it covers where I need it to cover by a lot. And there is my piece. Everything is sewn on. Everything is covering the way it's supposed to. So that is now done. That was page 30. I'm going to move on to page 29. I'm going to start by getting rid of all this excess paper. So page 29, I'm just going to cut all that excess away because it's in my way. We're going to go and grab our pieces. So piece one is BI, which is bright idea, which will be this piece right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on the back side. I'm going to make sure um, under the light that it's covering it all the way. And it is. That's where I want it to stay. So I'm going to throw a pin in it real quick. Totally need to fold. I always forget to fold the lines. That's my biggest thing is the fold. I never remember to just fold on the line. It's like my brain doesn't want me to remember. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pre-fold all these lines. Folding on the black line between the letters. All right, and I'm also gonna make sure that this didn't shift real quick. 
and it didn't. It's good, right where it is. So I'm gonna go ahead between one and two. I'm gonna fold that and I'm gonna create my first quarter inch seam. Just like that. So now I have a straight edge to line up QI, which is lemon ice. I'm gonna make sure where it goes. And that's the way it's gonna go. I'm gonna hold the side that I want on the other side. I know you guys didn't see me do that just now. Hold this on the light. Here, we'll bring it up here so you can see. I got like all this stuff going on in my little area here. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on the line, fold it back. It covers it the way I want it to. I'm gonna go ahead and sew between one and two. Just gonna hold that on there. All right, between one and two is sewn. We're gonna make sure real quick that it covers it, and it does. That's where I want it, but first I'm gonna get rid of this seam allowance. As you can see that the seam, let me hold it up to the camera, you can see that the other color comes beyond it. We're just gonna get rid of that with the add a quarter ruler. I'm using the side that has the lip. So you can see there's a lip right here that my fingernail is stuck on. There's that. I'm gonna cut this. Toss that out of the way and roll this back. I'm just using my fingers to kind of pry it back. I am picking up threads from everywhere. I'm just rolling it back. And now I'm gonna find between two and three and fold that on its line. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a quarter inch away. The fold is lining up with the fold of the paper. So it's literally lining up on the fold of the paper. Toss that. So now I need QW, which is summer pear, which is this big piece. And it is cut in that direction. No, it's cut in this direction. So I know it's gonna cover it here. I'm gonna flip that over add this right here. I'm going to go ahead and hold it over my light real quick to make sure 100% that it's covering and it is right there, exactly right there. I'm not going to move it, shift it or anything. I'm just going to hold this, flip it over and sew between two and three. All right. I'm also gonna remove that pin. I'm gonna roll it back, make sure that it covered it by a quarter inch all the way around. Hold it up to the light and it did. Ooh, that was perfect. I'm gonna trim away that seam first, making them both square with each other. There we go. Now I need between three and four. I'm gonna roll this first though. Okay, so between three and four is CN. CN is this chestnut color. I'm gonna make sure that's the way it's going to go. But first we're going to fold it on that line and trim away the seam allowance. If it wants to trim. There we go. Come off of there.
So again, it's going to go right here. I know that this one's going to cover. I'm not worried about it. So I'm going to flip it over and just know that this is the side that I am sewing on right here. Just like this. Move this out of the way. I'm going to sew between three and four. Gonna lay it on the light and make sure that it covered, and it did, plenty of space. So I'm gonna cut away that extra seam allowance. That way it doesn't show behind anything. So both of those are equal. And now I'm gonna roll it back. There's a lot of work that goes into this. Definitely a lot of work. All right, and last piece is this one right here. So I'm gonna turn it over. I'm going to pull the paper carefully away right here so that I can fold my line between um, three and five. I'm just gonna pull that out of the seam. Just barely, I wanna get to that line. Just pulling the paper away, I'm not ripping the, the stitches, just pulling the paper very carefully so that I can have a nice straight line right here. I'm gonna cut away all this excess bulk. That was a lot of bulk right there. Okay. And now, I know that this piece is gonna go right here and I know that it's gonna cover it. So I'm gonna hold that, lay it on here, just like this. We're gonna hold it in spot that we want it, flip it over and sew between three and five. Pretty sure that covered it all the way check it at the light and it did. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the excess seam allowance because it's very bulky on this exact piece. I literally just cut a tiny sliver. And yes, I am throwing things around today. <laughs> if you haven't noticed. <laughs> All right, so that is now rolled and Whatever page this came from, I think it was like 29 or something, <laughs> is now complete. So I'm going to move that aside and we're going to go to the next one. So this is one piece off of page 28, but there's a second piece. I cut them when I did this. This one has a whole heck of a lot of pieces to it. So let's fold first between all of our numbers. So I'm going to fold all these up. This one has a whole heck of a lot of pieces. And we're going to come across that through this whole entire sew along is there's going to be pages that have a lot of pieces to them. So make sure that you're keeping your pieces with your pages because, and your color charts or the colors themselves next to you. I find it easier to see the actual color than I do to see um, the little paper that has the colors listed on it. All right, we're gonna find one, which is UP. So that is this cappuccino color. So it's my biggest piece. And it's a very awkward cut. I did cut it kind of funky. So I'm gonna go ahead and line this up using the light. So I'm gonna lay my paper over it and I'm gonna see exactly where this needs to be right here. I'm gonna throw two pins in it. So I'm gonna throw one pin up here and a second pin down here to hold it in place. There we go. 
just like that. So my piece is held in place. I'm going to fold between one and two. And I'm going to cut away all this lovely excess. There it is, right there. <laughs> all right. So between one and two is my start, and I have a nice straight edge to work with. So number two is ho, H-O. Uh, that's chocolate. That would be this one, I think. Yep, that's chocolate right here. So this one goes in this direction. I already know that it covers the whole piece. So this is the side that I want to sew. I'm going to hold that side, flip it over, because this is going to go on here like that. And that way, when it's flipped over, it covers the whole piece. Come down just a little, right there. This is where I want it. I can see kind of the piece, but if you don't trust it, just bring your handy dandy light up to you, fold it over and go, oh, hey, that's gonna cover it. I'm gonna move that out of the way. I'm gonna hold my piece nicely where I want it. This paper is an awkward size and I'm gonna sew between one and two. And it's really nice to use a knee lift when doing this um, because you can use your hands to hold everything. And you just use your knee to lift the foot up. So highly recommend getting used to a knee lift. Uh, both these are dark and I really didn't go funky with that seam allowance. So I'm just gonna go ahead and roll this back. Just like that. And I'm gonna fold between two and three. I'm just gonna peel that away so that I have a nice straight line. I'm gonna cut that away in between two and three. Get rid of that seam allowance. I'm gonna go ahead and find piece B O B O P B O B O. That one is this round color right here. I'm gonna see which way I cut it out. And it looks like it's gonna go this direction. So this is the side that I want to sew right here. So I'm just gonna flip that onto this right here. I'm gonna make sure that it's covering it all the way and it looks to be like it is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hold this in place and sew it. And I am stitching beyond, if you could see right here, I am stitching beyond the seam allowance. That way all that is still held down when I trim the blocks to the size they need to be. And that looks like a pretty good seam allowance there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that seam allowance as cut. When I fold it back and lay it over the light, it covers what it's supposed to. I am using my fingers to peel it open. All right, now we're gonna pull these pins out of the way because they are not needed. And we're gonna fold between one and four. And I'm gonna give that a nice quarter inch seam allowance. And we're gonna find T, which is espresso. That's this one. I'm gonna make sure, so I'm covering the camera. Yep, it's this one. Now I just have to make sure which way I cut this one. Because some of these I did cut funky from the pieces. So did I cut it this way? I did. Or did I cut it this way? I think I cut it this way right here. So this is the side I want it to sew on. It's going to stick out quite a bit because it's not a very straight piece. So I'm gonna hold right here where there would be a seam allowance and make sure that it's covering, and it is. So I'm gonna hold that in place, and I'm gonna sew between one and four. Okay, I'm 
I'm gonna fold it back and go, hey, hey, look at that. It covered everything. That's what I wanted, but I'm gonna get rid of that funky seam allowance right there. You know, this whole entire time I've been trying to stay organized with all of where everything is and how I'm doing it, but I still seem to be out of sorts. <laughs> It's like it's everywhere. What am I doing? So I'm just constantly like moving things out of my way. All right, I'm rolling it. We're going to fold between four and five. I have to pull the paper just a little bit. I'm going to give myself that little seam allowance there. All right, and now I need CF, which is coffee. Is that this one? Let's make sure. So what I'm doing is taking my piece and the color. I like to put the color on the color because some of them are so similar. So this is my piece for here. This is the side I need to sew it on. I'm going to roll it under like this. Line it up. That one's pretty darn straight. We're going to sew between four and five. And there's a bunch of lines that come together here at the end. I'm going to show you real quick. All these right here is a bunch of seam allowances coming together. So just know that there's going to be a lot of thread build up there. It shouldn't be horrible. And when you go to put everything together, everything will be good. All right, I'm going to fold that back. So I'm just going to use my finger. I know that's where it needs to be. So now between five and six. So I'm going to go ahead and fold between five and six. I'm going to get rid of that right here. And we need BO, which was the brown again. So that's this one. I know that this is going to cover it right here, so that's the spot that's going to get sewn right here. So I'm going to sew between five and six now. I'm going to leave that because that's a darker color. I'm just going to use my finger. I covered it all the way. There is a big chunk building up right here of all these fabrics coming together. No worries, it should all work out. All right, now we need to fold between six and seven. So I'm just going to peel the paper again. I'm really creating a nice big chunk of um, fabric right there. All right, so I'm going to cut between these two, six and seven. There's a big chunk that not cutting very well. Six and seven, that's this piece right here. So I know that this is the end I'm sewing. I'm going to lay it on here. I'm going to fold it back and make sure it does cover it the way I want it to. We're going to hold it in place and we're going to put that last piece right here. Just know it is super bulky, very bulky. And I'll show you in a second how bulky that is. And that is covering my seam. Just going to use my finger on this one. You can see right here, this is a big knot right there. It's a very big knot. It's very thick. So don't mind that. It's all going to work out in the end when those come together like that. So now page 28, the first one on it, is now sewn. So let's go to the other part of page 28, which is this little guy right here. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the rest of all this excess paper. And we're going to start with folding our lines because I remembered. <laughs> I'm folding on the black lines. 
this one only has three pieces, so I shouldn't get very confused. If it was a small piece like that, like this, with a bunch of pieces, I would be confused. But it's not. All right, T is piece one. So T is the espresso. That would be this one. We're going to see which way I cut it. Hold it up to the light. Did I cut it this way? All right. Yep, I did. So I'm going to lay it over my piece, making sure that it's covering it. All right there. Covering quarter inch right there, covering quarter inch right there. I'm going to go ahead and pin it in place. I only need one pin for this one. So I got a pin in there. So MY is the second piece, which is obvious. MY is this one. It's mahogany. And it's going to go right here, just like this. So I'm going to, oops, let's cut away the seam allowance first make it easier on myself. Can't cut on that. I got to cut right here. <laughs> I don't want to cut my friend's light. All right. We're going to line this up. I know that it sits right here. So I'm going to go ahead. Make sure one more time. I got dust flying around me right now. Make sure that it covers it right here. That's the way it's going to go. Now I'm going to sew it on the line between one and two. I'm going to make sure before I do anything. Oh, good. It does. Okay. It seemed like I cut that a little short. I probably did. It happens, but it was right there on where I needed it to be, so that's good. Okay, I'm going to move the light out of the way. And we're going to cut between one and three. So let's fold between one and three. Create a seam allowance. And that's this piece right here don't remember which way I cut it, so I'm going to bring the light up here to me and see which way I cut it. No, it was definitely that way. So that's the side I want to sew on, so I'm just going to hold it and flip it right there. And sew between one and three. Fold it back. Oh, it covers it perfectly. Just going to roll it. And that one went pretty quick because it was a small piece. So that was from page 28, I think. All right, page 27. And I think from now on, I'm going to put you in fast forward because I think you know what I'm doing here and you're going to see while I'm doing it. I think it, it helps me speed it up just a little bit because <laughs> this takes a while. All right, so fast forward.
pages 25 through 30 are ready to be trimmed. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm having a bad day. It happens. I have bad days all the time. I was struggling to sit and do this. I needed to stand and move because my neck and shoulders are killing me. So, yeah, I decided to stand while sewing them. And if you didn't notice, I screwed up plenty of pieces while I was standing. So make sure you're comfortable and you can see what you're doing. My desk is kind of low, which makes it a little hard for standing and doing anything. But make sure you're very comfortable when you're making your blocks because you're going to mess up like me. And you don't want to mess up like I just did. I'm showing you what not to do. <laughs> so let's get down and cut these and get them to the size they need and then file them. Okay, they're nice and pressed. So all we need to do now is trim them to the size of, oops, I only need one piece. Back here on the back side, there is a gray line. We are trimming to the outside of that gray line. So I'm just gonna line up my ruler and go snip like that. And you can see it's kind of, you can still see some of the white. That's just giving me a little bit extra just in case. But I'm snipping to the, I'm um, trimming to the outside of the gray line, not the inside. You want the outside. So when we're all finished, our block piece will look like this. As you can see, there's threads everywhere, but it's a nicely cut piece. I have a little bit of white showing. So it just gives me a better seam allowance because when I sew them together, I'm sewing on the line. So it really doesn't matter as long as they're trimmed up neatly. So again, we did a page uh, 25 through page 30. Oops, that one I kind of made a little on the wonky side. Like I said, I'm struggling today, guys. Struggling. But we're making sure everything is nicely squared up to the outside of the gray. And now you know why I stitched beyond the gray, because we want it started, the stitches, to be away on the outside. We don't want those stitches to be on the inside of that gray starting at the black line. You need it to go all the way across or your piece will not sit right. So you want them stitched all the way to the end. That's why those lines are there. All right, let's cut some more up. So on this piece right here, my page ripped because I had to rip and then put it back. So my bottom part was off. So you can see right here at the bottom, I actually came out a little bit further because it wasn't straight because this piece had fallen off. So it's sort of in place, but we don't want to tear the paper away. We're trying to leave the paper there because we need to know what piece it is. But if you lose your paper, no worries if you lose it afterwards and the pieces start falling off because they're, you know, the stitches. Just mark this block being this right here. You want it to say C1, okay? So mark the block if you lose any of your paper. So I'm just letting you know that. And I'm also going to give this one a stitch real quick to hold this flap down. We're just going to stitch right here on this, in this gray area, which is my seam allowance. So I just gave it a quick stitch. It's within that seam allowance, so it's just fine. It's just to hold it down neatly so that nothing um, shifts and moves when I go to put it away. So it's laying nicely. So let's file all of our pieces. All right, let's bring the book over here. And you can see my plastic sheets have all my pieces in them. We're going to 
turn these over and see what they are. So we're going to find C's. I'm going to just put where the start of my C's are is right here. So C1 is going to go in here because this is the start of my C's. Right there. And then C3A is right here. So it's going to go in this folder or file or whatever you want to call it this sheet. C3B is also going to go in here. C2D. C2D is going to go in here. Let's see. Hold on. C2C. C2C. C2B, okay, that's going to go here. C2A, all those pieces actually go together. And then B2B, no, B8B, B8B, okay. So all these are going in this folder, in this side. if I can get them in here. Nicely organized, hopefully. <laughs> okay, there we have it. So everything is put in the book. Now it's all in the book, everything's filed away. I'm really sorry if you got confused with all of my mess ups, even though I had that in fast forward, I did have to unpick pick, unpick, whatever. I had to unstitch a few times. I don't really feel that good today, but I was trying not to, you know, push it out there in the video, but it kind of happens that way. So I'm just like kind of pushing myself through this video. I probably should have gave it a day before filming it, but I really just want to get things done and move on to the next step. So this was week five. Next time will be week six. Again, this is the Skulliver Sew Along. It's very fun, even on bad days. I still enjoy sewing it. I just don't feel that good. So hopefully you guys remember to just <sighs> breathe because I had to do that quite a few times today <laughs> and know that it, it gets better each time we do this. So I want to thank you for watching and hanging out with me while we sewed up week five's blocks and I will see you in the next video. Bye.